Today I'm going to show you the progress I have been making on the track work and wiring at the Pocatello staging yard on my end scale layout. Stick around because that's coming right up. Hi, I'm Roy Smith. Back in April, I showed you how I built the benchwork for the staging yard at Pocatello, Idaho on my layout. I will include a link to that video at the end of this video. I hope you will go over and take a look at that video after watching this one because it provides important information about the prototype at Pocatello and the role that the staging yard plays on my layout. I will say right up front that I use Kato Unitrack on my layout, and I really like it. I used FlexTrack on my layout that I built back in the 1980s, and then I left the hobby for 30 years, and when I came back to it four years ago in 2014, I discovered Kato Unitrack. I decided to use it because it's convenient and reliable. Some people tell me they don't like Kato Track but I'm sticking with it because I don't need all of that bending, cutting, and soldering of track at this point in life. By the way, some people also tell me that they don't like the Union Pacific or they don't like N-Scale, and that's okay. We have lots of variety to choose from in model railroading, and that's a good thing. I also want to say that I did not invent the method for connecting track across a lift-out bridge that I'm about to show you. I learned about it from my good friend Gary Leach Sr. in Pennsylvania. Like me, Gary uses Kato Unitrack on his layout and like me, he has a lift-out bridge on his layout. Thanks Gary for sharing this method with me. Alright, here's the Pocatello staging yard as it currently exists on my layout. I've completed the track work and most of the wiring, and I will show you how I did it. The yard is 8 inches wide and 9 feet long and contains four staging tracks. As a staging yard, it will add a significant amount of traffic to the layout, both to Evanston and points west and to Green River and points east. My track plan illustrates the important role that the Pocatello Staging Yard will play in layout operations. The Staging Yard is shown in red. The Pocatello Subdivision leads to the Y at Granger, Wyoming, where it joins the Evanston Subdivision. I call it a Staging Yard because of the kind of role it will play in my layout operations, but even though it's a Staging Yard, it will be scenic. I will install a photo backdrop representing the Pocatello area, and I will paint and ballast the track. The yard crosses in front of a closet door, so I had to build a lift-out bridge. The masonite backdrop is attached directly to the closet door. Later on in this video, I will show you how easy and quick it is to remove the lift-out bridge for access to the closet. These Kato expansion tracks are a critical part of the track work at the lift-out bridge. This is how the expansion tracks come, and this is how they work. They can be extended from three inches to four and a quarter inches. Here you see the expansion tracks installed across the cut for the lift out bridge. I'm going to show you how I installed them. The first thing I tried to do was get the ends of the track as close to the cut for the lift-out bridge as possible without actually crossing the cut. In this picture, the lift-out bridge is to the left of the cut. The expansion tracks are located on the bridge. I have completed the connection on track one. I am now working on the second of the four tracks. I have already removed the Kato unit joiner from the expansion track as shown in the red circle. Other brands of track might refer to this as a rail joiner. I have not yet removed the unit joiner from the expansion track in tracks 3 and 4. In a moment you will see what I am doing with the unit joiners so that I can easily slide the expansion track across the cut and connect it to the track on the right side of the cut. As I said, I wanted to bring the track as close as I could to the cut. 
This cattle assortment of small track sections helped me do just that. This is an example of one piece of track from the track assortment. As I mentioned, I had to remove the unit joiners from the expansion tracks. This is easy to do using a simple plastic tool that comes in every pack of Kato drop feeders, which Kato calls terminal unit joiners. Now the next thing I have to do is cut off both clips at one end of the unit joiners, shown in red circles. These clips hold Kato track together. They must be removed at one end of the unit joiner, not at both ends, for the expansion tracks to work as I intend them to, and as you will see in a moment. It's easy to cut off the clips using a track cutter. You can cut them off while holding the unit joiner in one hand like this. The end where the clips have been removed will connect to the expansion tracks, shown here on the left side of the cut in the benchwork. You also can cut off the clips while the unit joiners are still attached to the track, but I find it more difficult to get a straight cut this way. That's why I prefer to remove the unit joiners from the track before cutting off the clips. Okay, it's time to drill holes for the Kato drop feeders. Drilling large holes in the plywood gives me more wiggle room for the drop feeders and track, as you will see in a moment. I am double checking to make sure that I got the white feeder and blue feeder wires on the correct rails. If I reverse them, it will cause a short in the layout. This car helps me identify the white rail and the blue rail. I write W for white on one side of the car and B for blue on the other side. I can push this car around the layout as I'm installing the drop feeders to make sure I don't get them reversed. Cato terminal unit joiners, or drop feeders, come in packs like this. Inside the pack you can see the blue plastic tool that I showed you a moment ago that you use to remove regular unit joiners before installing the terminal unit joiners. And here's what the terminal unit joiners look like after you take them out of the pack and straighten out the wires. Again, the white wire and blue wire must be attached to the same rail all the way around the layout to avoid reversing the polarity of the rails, thus causing a short. Now I snap the track together. Then I drop the feeders down through the hole I drilled earlier and pull it snugly under the layout. You can now see how drilling a larger hole allows me to easily wiggle the track around and get it into the position I want it to be. Now I'm connecting the track on the right side of the cut to the expansion track on the left side. None of the track is glued down yet so it moves around when I make this connection. But this won't happen after it's glued down. Of course, the moving parts of the expansion track will not be glued down. In a moment you will see how easily the expansion tracks connect to the track on the opposite side of the cut. Okay, the track is all connected. Now I want to get it as straight as I can. To do this, I use an eight foot long piece of molding. I lay the molding alongside each track and nudge the track up against the molding to make sure the track is straight. Time to glue the track down. I can use a hot glue gun to do this. That's what I've done on the rest of my layout. But I have just discovered this liquid silicon glue. I put a drop of it on either side of the track every one or two feet. It takes a little longer to set up than the glue from the hot glue gun, but at least I won't burn my fingers when using it. Here's all four tracks as straight as I can make them and all glued down. With the track glued down, I go back to do a little more work on the wiring. I have dropped the feeders at three spots in the staging yard. At the right end, on the lift out bridge, and at the left end. For now, the only drop feeders that I probably will connect to the bus wires are those feeders at the right end of the yard. Uh, to, be, to be sure about it, I don't even need to be in a hurry to connect those because all of the tracks in the yard are already receiving current from way over on the other side of the layout. That's how reliable Kato track is. If and when I do connect the feeders under the bridge and to the left of the bridge, I will need to install some kind of electrical plugs that are easy to unconnect 
when I want to remove the bridge. Under the layout, it will connect the drop feeders to barrier strips using spade connectors, as I have done elsewhere on my layout. I like this method of wiring. It's easy and it keeps the wiring neatly organized. I use 16 gauge wire for my bus wires. One bus wire is blue and the other one is white. I connect the blue drop feeders to the blue bus wire and white feeders to the white bus wire. Being consistent like this reduces the likelihood that I will mess up the wiring. So I have connected the drop feeders to the barrier strips but have not yet connected the barrier strips to the bus wires. I will label each connection under the layout and on a copy of my track plan. Now it's time to do some testing. I like to test frequently as I go. If there, if there is a problem, it will be more difficult to find it if I wait until later on. As you can see, it's working just fine. Sooner or later, I will need to get into that closet. Let me show you just how quick and easy it is to slide open the expansion tracks. And then to remove the lift out bridge just like this. And to think I was worried about access to the closet for such a long time before I began to build the Pocatello staging yard. While we're here at Pocatello, let's just jump across the aisle for a moment because I want to show you that I have finally started to do the scenery at Echo Canyon. Many of you have been asking, when am I going to get started on this? Well, at long last, I finally have. Right now, it looks like a pile of styrofoam, but I will be carving it to look like the cliffs of Echo Canyon. And soon I will be able to show you my progress. When it's done, I hope it will capture the feel of the prototype, which looks like this. If you look closely, you can see the Union Pacific tracks in this photo. Well, as always, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you will subscribe to this channel if you have not yet done so, because I try to upload a new video every Saturday morning, and I don't want you to miss any of them. Until next time, happy railroading. I will see you again very soon.